You can order the steering rack and pinion used in the video on carparts.com via the link in the description. Turn your engine off. Set the parking brake. Pull on the hood release handle and open the hood. Loosen the stud bolts on the front wheels. Lift the front of your vehicle. We strongly suggest watching our video on how to jack your Honda Accord safely before carrying out this step. Place the vehicle on the jack stands. In order to change the steering rack and pinion on your vehicle, you will need to take off the wheels to have full access. Don't forget to put the wheels under the vehicle. For this operation, you need to remove the outer tie rods from each side of the vehicle. To do so, we recommend watching the video, How to Replace the Outer Tie Rod Honda Accord. Before removing your steering rack and pinion, we recommend replacing the power steering fluid with new fluid first. This will avoid contaminating the mechanism of the new steering rack and pinion with used fluid. To do this, we recommend watching our video, How to Bleed the Power Steering Fluid Honda Accord. It describes all the steps involved in replacing the fluid, as well as filling the hydraulic system and bleeding the air once the new rack and pinion has been installed. It is therefore essential to watch this video to successfully complete this operation. Before you start, set the wheel straight and use the steering lock to lock the steering wheel in this position. For safety reasons, we advise you to disconnect the battery. To do so, we recommend watching the video, How to Replace the Honda Accord Car Battery. Under the steering wheel, near the pedals, unclip the plastic cover by pulling on it. This will give you access to the steering shaft, which is held in place by a 10 mm pinch bolt in the power steering rack shaft. Using a 10 mm wrench, unscrew the pinch bolt. Once the pinch bolt has been removed, you can disconnect the steering shaft from the power steering rack shaft. When removing the steering shaft, take care not to rotate it in such a way as to damage the airbag system. Therefore, keep it in its original position as much as possible when you shift it. Remove the yellow plastic part. You will need to reinstall it later on the new shaft. Using a ratchet, an extender, and a 10 mm socket, unscrew the three nuts holding the plastic cover to facilitate the subsequent removal of the steering rack and pinion. You can remove the plastic cover if you want to make the procedure easier for yourself, but it is not mandatory to remove the rack and pinion. Now, position yourself in the engine compartment on the driver's side, behind the engine, level with the pedals. Positioned under the master cylinder, you can see the power steering rack where you will need to unscrew the two power steering lines. On the front, the pressure line. At the back, the return line. Brush and spray the two nuts with penetrating oil to facilitate unscrewing, which may be very difficult. Place a fluid container under the lines to catch any fluid that flows out. If you want to know which tools and parts we use in this video, just check the description and you'll find everything you need. For unscrewing, we recommend using an open ring wrench rather than a traditional wrench. This will make unscrewing much easier. Insert the 19mm open ring wrench through the top of the engine compartment. Then start by unscrewing the pressure line. Finish unscrewing by hand. Do the same with the return line. Start by loosening it with a 17 mm open ring wrench. You can finish unscrewing with a wrench. If you position yourself above the engine compartment on the passenger side, level with the rack and pinion retaining bolts, you can see a thermal shield. Start by unscrewing its upper retaining bolt.
Then pull slightly on the thermal shield to free up some space for the next operations. Using a ratchet, a large extender, and a 14mm socket, unscrew the front retaining bolt on the passenger side rack and pinion. Then remove the bolt. Using the same tools and a gimbal, unscrew the rear retaining bolt on the passenger side rack and pinion. Then remove the bolt. Now you need to unscrew the two rack and pinion bolts on the driver's side subframe. Using a ratchet, a large extender, a gimbal, and a 17mm socket, unscrew the front retaining bolt on the rack and pinion. Depending on the year of the manufacturer, the front bolt also holds a metal bracket, which must be released by unscrewing another retaining bolt, which does not feature on our vehicle. Using the same tools, unscrew the rear retaining bolt, Remove the bolt by using a magnetic extender. On the passenger side, use a fork to unclip the return line hose from its bracket. Using a ratchet, an extender, and a 10mm socket, unscrew the retaining bolt of the metal bracket that holds the power steering line to the rack and pinion. You can now remove the metal bracket that held the rack and pinion to the bushing. On either side of the vehicle, you can see a bracket connecting the subframe to the upper frame. On the passenger side, start by spraying the two horizontal retaining bolts with penetrating oil to facilitate disassembly. Next, using a ratchet and a 14mm socket, unscrew the two bolts. You don't have to remove the lower bolt completely. Using a long 17mm socket, unscrew the vertical bolt holding the metal bracket to the upper frame. You can now remove the bracket. Repeat the operation on the driver's side bracket. Hey! It's Alex from CarParts.com. If you enjoyed this video and want to support us, like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, back to work. To remove the rack and pinion from its location, the subframe must be lowered to create the space required to remove the part. First, unscrew the two front subframe retaining bolts by a few threads. To do this, you will need a ratchet, an extender, and a 17 millimeter socket. Do not unscrew the bolts completely. Next, unscrew the two rear subframe retaining bolts. Start by unscrewing the metal bracket retaining bolt on each side, using a ratchet and a 17mm socket. You can use the same tools to unscrew the rear subframe retaining bolts, which will lower the subframe as you unscrew them. You can now remove the steering rack and pinion from its slot. To do this, start by pushing the rack and pinion outwards from the passenger side. Next, from the driver's side, you can rotate the assembly to remove the power steering rack shaft from the plastic cover. Then, remove the rack and pinion. Once the rack and pinion has been removed, retrieve the rubber boot on the power steering shaft and clean it so that it can be reinstalled on the new part. On the passenger side, retrieve the rubber bushing for subsequent reinstallation. You can purchase the parts we used here by visiting our website at carparts.com. You can order the steering rack and pinion used in the video on carparts.com via the link in the description. Take the new rack and pinion. Then, measure the distance between the lock nut and the end of the inner tie rod using a caliper. Then, transfer the same measurement to the lock nut of the new rack and pinion. Repeat this step on the other side. 
This will give you an alignment check as close as possible to the old settings. In any case, a wheel alignment check will have to be carried out by a professional soon after having performed this operation. The new part is fitted with blanking plugs for the pressure line and return line sockets. When the rack and pinion is installed in its slot, they protect the orifices from impurities that could enter the hydraulic system of the part. Use a flathead screwdriver to unscrew them all the way down to the last thread, so that they stay in place but can be easily removed when the rack and pinion is installed. Normally, the new part is centered during the remanufacturing. However, if you have any doubts, there is a very simple technique to ensure that the part is properly centered. Use vice grips to clamp the power steering rack shaft. Then turn the shaft to one side until it stops. Turn the shaft in the other direction, counting the exact number of turns. Rotate the shaft by half the number of turns counted. This ensures that the part is perfectly centered. Put the rubber boot back on the power steering shaft and the rubber bushing on the passenger side. You can now put the rack and pinion back in its slot, inserting it from the driver's side. To insert it, adjust it to the position shown in the video. We strongly recommend getting help on the passenger side to insert the part more easily. Once close to the final slot, rotate the part, taking care not to damage the lines. Take your time, reproducing the technique shown in the video, and be careful not to damage the rubber boot. Once in its final slot, insert the rack and pinion opposite its attachment points. Once in place, correctly reposition the rubber bushing on the passenger side. Now you need to screw the subframe back on. Screw the two front subframe retaining bolts back on until they make contact. Moving to the rear subframe retaining bolts, roughly screw the metal bracket retaining bolt back on. Then, screw the subframe retaining bolt back on until it makes contact. Then alternate between tightening the metal bracket retaining bolt and the subframe retaining bolt until final tightening is achieved. Repeat this step on the other side. On the passenger side, put the metal bracket connecting the subframe to the upper frame back in place. Then screw the vertical bolt back on. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. And screw the two horizontal bolts back on. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. Repeat the operation with the metal bracket on the driver's side. Then, put the metal bracket holding the steering rack and pinion on the passenger side back in place. Put the front rack and pinion retaining bolt back in place on the passenger side and screw it back on. Do the same with the rear retaining bolt. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. Put the rear rack and pinion retaining bolt back in place and screw it back on. Then screw the front rack and pinion retaining bolt on the driver's side back on. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. Screw the pressure line metal bracket back onto the metal bracket. Clip the return line retaining clip back on. You can now screw the thermal shield retaining bolt back onto the metal bracket. 
Unscrew the return line blanking plug. Screw the return line back on by hand at first. Then finish tightening with the open ring wrench. Repeat the operation with the pressure line. You can now put the outer tie rods back in. To do so, we recommend watching the video How to Replace the Outer Tie Rod Honda Accord. You can now return to the cabin. Start by putting the three plastic cover retaining nuts back in place. Put the yellow plastic part back on the new power steering rack shaft. Then reinsert the steering shaft into the rack shaft. Once in place, you can screw the pin bolt back on. Reinstall the plastic cover protection. Reconnect the battery. The installation of the new rack and pinion is now complete. However, before putting your vehicle back on the ground, you must reboot the steering system hydraulics. To do this, we recommend watching our video, How to Bleed the Power Steering Fluid Honda Accord. We show you how to bleed and reboot your power steering fluid circuit, so you can safely enjoy the full performance of your new steering rack and pinion. Then you will be able to put the wheels back on your vehicle. Put your vehicle back on the ground before properly fixing the wheels in place. Operation complete.